Good evening, everyone. I well, Afsha Aziz welcome all of you on behalf of Uri Bridge for this uh, virtual info session between College of Kenyans and Tulaz International School, Dehradun. Thank you all the students for being here tonight and uh, to be have, be patient for uh, this much time. So uh, we will be starting with a webinar. Uh, first of all, I would uh, request Mr. Robin Chetri to speak a little bit about the importance of this webinar. Yeah, over to you, Mr. Robin. All right, thank you. Um, well, you know, at this at this stage of of career, you know, at this stage of where where the world is going towards a skill development program, where you've got a lot of jobs available as per your skills, as per the talent that you guys have. So it is important for a school to connect with the university so that you guys, all these students can have a prior knowledge about what the, you know, what the outside world is all about. There are a lot of career nowadays, you know, you might not even think about it. I speak, I've spoken to a lot of universities from, from studios to, you know, to engineering, to doctorate, to management courses and the exposure, the world due to technology and travel has become so small that it is easy for a, for a guy who's brought up in India to go and study in a, in, a, in a country like US or maybe Australia and to open up and broaden up the perspective of the world. You know, you, there are a lot of ways a guy you know, in India can, can help to his father's business or maybe he wants to do something by himself. But the, the opportunity is equally important to be given to every child and that's why we guys are here. Tulas International School wants every each and every student of Tulas to have a complete exposure of how these guys can go ahead, get an admission in, in a college in US, see what all things would work with them and how the entire you know education throughout the world is helping the student you know to to uh, to go ahead and you know uh, to see, to see more about the career. So uh, I this session is all hold up for this all these reasons only and with the special request to 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 Tim and to Dr. Cheng, as you spoke earlier, they they are they have been very keen to help us out with our student to understand what what they want, what they require. And uh, thank you for having a great session. And I, I hope this is going to be great, and everyone is going to going to enjoy and see a new uh, you know a new benchmark. You know, they they might find something new for their career. So I hope and you know, all the best to everyone. Thank you so much, Mr. Robin Chetri. Uh, we have a uh, great team for, from College of Kenyans over here. So we have Mr. Tim Honedel. We have uh, Dr. Jai uh, Cheng with us. So and uh, one more student who will be sharing his uh, experience of College of Kenyans with us, uh, Mr. Ernesto. So we'll be hearing him afterwards. Uh, now I would like to request Mr. Tim Honedel to start with the presentation and uh, tell us a little bit more about College of Kenyans. Over to you, Mr. Tim Honedel. Okay. So, um, well, first of all, uh, thank you. My father got me here. Boy, yeah, what's that? So, my father got driving license. Thank you, Dr. Robin, for that introduction. You are exactly right. This uh, is all about providing options to students so that every student has the opportunity to achieve their academic goals. And academic goals are directly related to the ability to start a great career when you finish school. So we're gonna talk about that right now. Um, uh, I want to introduce Dr. Jai Chang Levine. Uh, we call her Dr. J because her name is so long. So all the kids call her that. And since all the kids call her that, now everybody in the whole college calls her that. And uh, she's been a professor of English. She's been a chair of the department. She's been at the College of Canyons for a long time. She has a very rich academic career. And she has settled at College of the Canyons when she had the choice of every academic institution in the United States to go to because she two things, believed in the mission of the college and also because the College of the Canyons is located in the Santa Cruz Valley, and we will talk about what a great place the college is located. My name is Tim, as you know, and uh, if Dr. J's job is to make sure the institution is in support of you, my job is to make sure the entire department is in support of every student. 
Our goal here at the college is to make sure that you are very successful as students. It's a different way of thinking. If you think of the prestigious schools like Berkeley and UCLA and MIT, their goal is to make it very, very, very difficult. So very few people complete. And I am just the opposite. My job is to make sure that you have all your needs taken care of so you can maximize your most highest potential for college. This is how the system is structured. And if my cursors uh, can be seen, uh, you can see that you've have high school here, which is where you are. And then you move to the bachelor's degrees and you have two choices in California. We're gonna talk a lot more about this, but the two choices are you can go to a four year school or you can go to a college of the canyons for two years and then two years at the four year school. And I know it's a little complicated, but what it does is it creates a new pathway for students to be able to get into the bachelor's degree programs in California. And so instead of going straight to the school where there's not enough spaces, you come to me, you prove yourself, and then you transfer, and we'll talk a lot more about it. Then after me comes the master's degrees. So there's lots of really good reasons to do what we're talking about today. But I wanna talk about a couple of them very quickly because we can review this in detail later. The first one is, believe it or not, there are no tests required to come to my school. That's because Tulas is already an approved school. If you graduate from that school, you can come to my school and start your bachelor's degree in the United States. If you are over 18 years old and you have not finished Tulas, you can still start taking college level classes at my school. We are designed Indeed, to make excuse it Excuse me. Yeah, Tim, uh, may I request you to give a pause over here? Yeah. So we will be raising polls in between, uh, random polls for the students. So uh, Nupur, can we raise the poll? And uh, I request all the students that after this presentation gets over, then you can start typing your questions in the chat box and those questions will be catered at the end of the presentation. So here comes the poll for the, poll for the students. Uh, Nupur, can we have the other poll? Okay. So, uh, in your opinion, what would be the best reason for you to attend College of Kenyans? Please select one. Low tuition fee, no test required, guaranteed transfer program. You have some time. Student, please uh, start answering the question. You just have a few seconds left. We want to know your opinion. What is the in your opinion, be the best reason for the students to attend College of Kenyans is that low tuition fee, no test required, or guaranteed transfer program. Yes, keep answering the questions. Okay, here 20% says low tuition fee, 27% says no test required, and 53% says guaranteed transfer program. That's wonderful. Yes, Tim, shall we go ahead? Thank you so much. Sure, I think the polls are fun. So yeah, that's good. <laughs> so um, I like the results of that poll because you've covered three out of the four important things. Now, uh, Dr. Robbins said that ga gaining skills is an important part of what you do next after high school because of employers. And so I wanna point out that one of the cool things about coming to College of the Canyons is you get to work two times during your bachelor's degree uh, life. So the first time comes after two years of university and the second time comes after the fourth year of university. And so you get to have two times on your resume that you've worked. Um, guaranteed transfer is important uh, because you can go to any school in the United States and I can get you in there. So all we have to do is plan for it. And we'll do that at the very beginning of your school. So here's another way to look at how it works in California. You, fend, you spend your first two years as a freshman and as a sophomore. Most of that is 
uh, what we call general education. And general education makes you a well-rounded citizen of the world. And so you'll spend a lot of that. And then you'll also take courses in your area of study. And here's where you get to explore if you're not sure what you want to study. You get to explore and choose your area that you're most interested in, whether it's physics or management or early childhood education, all of that. And so that's what you do. And you, that is the same at every school in the United States. So you get to pick any school to do this at. Picking College of the Canyons is just a good idea because of those other things that the poll covered, which is the transferability, the low cost, and all the support structures that we have. The second two years are what we call the junior and senior years. And that's where you take almost a majority of your classes. They're all in your area of study, whatever that area is. So here's another way to look at it. If you look there, there's a one plus one plus two. And what that means is that you can start taking classes right now from India. So I know visas are hard to get these days. So you don't have to wait. You don't have to sit on the couch when you finish high school and play video games, which I know sounds great, but that's not what everybody wants you to do. Instead, what you can do is you can start taking your college classes from India. We started this program three years ago, and now it's working out great. So it's a perfect program for you. Here's a picture of all the places that you actually graduate from. So a lot of students will ask me, what is the ranking of your school? What is the ranking of College of the Canyons? Well, we're ranked number one, number one in the entire country. The reason we're ranked number one in the entire country, the best school ever, is because the ranking comes from the school we transfer to. No one needs the ranking of College of the Canyons. They need the ranking of the school that you graduate from. So if you start a College of Canyons and you finish at UCLA or Berkeley, well, you get the ranking of that school. You don't need my ranking. So that's why we're ranked number one in the entire country. This is a picture of a diploma from a student from College of the Canyons. And the reason I put this up here is just because I want you to notice there's nothing there about College of the Canyons on the entire diploma. So College of the Canyons is going to be forgotten. You're going to remember Unibridge. You're going to remember Tulas. And you're going to remember UC Berkeley. But you're going to forget College of the Canyons. And everyone always does. So this is, this is the diploma. No one knows you went to College of the Canyons unless you tell them. Now, I hope you tell everybody. But you know how it is. These are all the things that I want to point out that are just wonderful about College of the Canyons. It's a safe city. Now, safety matters. A lot of really good universities are in big cities. And big cities have big city life. Um, there's a lot of distractions and there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that make the big city harder to live as a freshman. But if you're a freshman and you come to College of the Canyons, You've got two years to really build up your abilities as a student, your study habits in, in the university setting, and really set that sort of that skill set up without the distractions of anything else except for school. And so College of the Canyons is located in a place that's very safe, very beautiful. Um, and of course, College of the Canyons has all the support structures, because remember, my goal is to make sure that you, as a student, are successful. If you're not successful, I'm not successful. Think about that. That is the opposite of the prestige universities. The prestige university is only the top, top, top finest complete. Everybody else goes away. And that's, that's a different way of thinking about it. But my way is that everyone, once I get you into Berkeley, you will finish Berkeley. And so we have lots of support for that. So save money here at College of the Canyons. It's a beautiful place to go to school. We have the one plus one program. So you can start right there in India and start getting your college classes taken care of. All of them exactly the same classes you would take at Berkeley or UCLA. Um, while you're taking classes, I want to point out that the social experience of school is going to be different 
because of online classes, but it's not gone. It's just different. We still have all the student clubs. We still have student government. All of those things where you're interacting with students, they're just doing it the way we're doing it right now instead of a face to face in the classroom. But uh, all of my friends now I talk to on Zoom and webinar, and it works out really, it works out great. We also have sports. Some sports are starting in the fall, depends on the sports. We're following all the health department requirements for sports, and some sports are just practicing. So we have sports, lots of sports programs. And you know what? One of the neat things about our sports programs is you don't have to be a world class athlete to play sports at College of the Canyons. It's open very inclusively to a lot more people. And if you are a world class athlete, our coaches know all the teams in the whole country. So they find a team that you can transfer to that wants exactly your skills. It really makes it possible for scholarships. One of the questions I get asked a lot is where am I gonna live? So when you go to some big four year schools, you live in the dormitories. Most people get out of the dormitories as fast as possible. It's a, it's a very distracting environment. At College of the Canyons, when you come to us, what we have is we have family and we have apartments. Now, we have a homestay program and Andy runs that homestay program for College of the Canyons and he'll, he should be online, you'll get to meet him today. But usually what happens is you get paired with a family. So the family knows what kind of food you like to eat. The family knows uh, if you like to play with big dogs or if you like the swimming pool or if you play the piano or anything. And he matches you up with those families and he knows all these families, they're all his people. And so it's a perfect setup. And the nice thing about staying with a family is you have somebody who really watches over your schoolwork and watch, knows when you're supposed to be taking your classes and knows when your tests are coming. So when you do come to California to come to College of the Canyons, you stay with a homestay family. Now, after a while, you may want maybe stretch your wings and you and a bunch of friends get together and you get an apartment, sort of more college style. You can also do that if you want to, right after the homestay. So here's some pictures of Santa Clarita and all the things that are nearby. Santa Clarita is this beautiful place here in California, you know, over here in Southern California. And it really is, um, it's, a special, it's just different from almost everywhere else in the United States. And we're a, only an hour from Los Angeles, but it seems like we're a world away. Tim, um, can you please excuse me again? Yes. I'm so sorry to drop in between. I so like we are it. coming up with another poll for the students. Oh, good. Let's see how uh, many students are uh, very much uh, interested and you know uh, concentrating more. So can we have the second poll, Nupur? Yeah. So what is the title given to the second year student in the United States? Is it a freshman, sophomore, or junior? Student, please answer the question quickly. You just have few seconds to answer the question. Great, great, great. So 22% are saying freshman, 58% sophomore, 17% junior. Uh, then now the statistics uh, is changed. So 20% freshman, 71% sophomore, but 12% junior. Okay, it means that everybody is listening very carefully. So I just want to see 100% result of the correct answer. 17% <laughs> are still saying freshmen, 72% sophomore, and 11% junior. Okay, you still have some time left? Just a few seconds. Just a few seconds. Okay, so 72% said sophomore. So sophomore is the correct answer. Yes, Tim, please go ahead. That's good, yes. See, remember this? Start at freshman. That's that's where all of you will start. Then you go to sophomore. Then you transfer to a different school, like UCLA or California State University. There's lots of schools that love to accept College of the Canyon students. Okay, so here's a, a slide of 
uh, where COC students have transferred. And uh, you can see that lots of students go to lots of different schools. There's lots of choices. Some students all go to the same, they all get together. You can see 10 students went to Northridge. They all got together and went to Northridge together, supporting each other. It was a good idea. I think it worked really well. They're all very happy. Here's an example of a student. This is a, not an unusual example, but he was accepted to lots of schools and he ended up picking UCLA. Here's another school, another student. He went to Berkeley. He was accepted to a lot of schools. Dana was accepted to schools all over the country and she chose to go to Berkeley. And uh, John Garzon, he went to Berkeley after us and then he went to Harvard Law School. And now John uh, is working at a prestigious law firm in Los Angeles and he is going to be a adjunct faculty at College of the Canyons. If you think about that, John could teach at any school in the country. He graduated from Harvard. He's choosing to teach at College of the Canyons because he's so thankful for the start that College of the Canyons gave him. And here are pictures of our whole team. And we have over 20 people supporting you. Um, there's lots and lots of students from India at our school, but most of them are not students on visas like you. So um, part of this team includes lots of people who are alumni of our program. And so right now, I would very much like to introduce Ernesto. Ernesto started at College of the Canyons, and he is now working on his PhD from the University of Florida. So he's gone from one side of the country to the other side of the country. And now he's back again to work with College of the Canyons. So Ernesto, I'm gonna turn this over to you for a couple of minutes for you to tell your story. You have a great story about your academic pathway and I think it applies really well to the students that are listening right now. So Ernesto, all for you. Sure. <clears throat> uh, how's everybody doing? My name's Ernesto Ramirez. And I'm just going to speak for a little bit and reiterate a couple of the points that was made by Tim earlier. Um, but so I have a vast experience in the California university system uh, at the community college level, at the California state university level, and in the University of California. All of those earlier echelons that Tim mentioned earlier. I could speak to very intimately because I'm familiar and I've spent many time at those institutions. Specifically, I want to emphasize one of the two of the things that I think make College of the Canyons different and that for someone like me, for instance, who would be considered what you might call a non-traditional student. And by non-traditional, I mean many things, but more specifically, I mean to say Neither my parents ever went to school a day in their lives, and so I didn't necessarily have, in terms of my upbringing, someone that could cultivate these skills um, that I could learn. Community college, when I started going, provided so many things for me, uh, and those two things that I mentioned earlier um, are what I'm going to speak about now, but specifically one, quality teachers. Quality teachers at College of the Canyons, many of whom exist at the community college level and also teach at the University of California, are available and they host office hours. And I remember when I started going to school, I used to go to office hours and exchange and have communication. And I was able to build solid relationships, many of which exist to this very day. Number two, smaller class sizes. Smaller class sizes enabled me to make friends quickly, enabled me to have a network of support that I could basically establish uh, and have someone to talk to, right? So these two things in conjunction, quality instruction and small class sizes as a whole cultivated an environment for someone like me, wherein I could basically establish and cultivate the skills and aptitudes that enabled me to succeed not only in other California institutions, but also, as, I, as Tim mentioned earlier, where I'm at right now, a Research One University, the University of Florida, where I'm currently um, um, in the process of developing my dissertation. Uh, I study political theory. 
Um, none of this, however, would have happened had it not been for the opportunities, the patience, the care, the mentorship that I received from various instructors at College of the Canyons. College of the Canyons, in many respects, opened this door where I could develop these strong relationships and where I could, and friendships um, that continue to provide various opportunities for me to this very day. Like, for instance, this opportunity, this opportunity to speak um, on behalf of uh, um, the uh, COC ISP, but also because of my strong relationship with Dr. Jai Cheng Levine, who was instrumental in my development and who looked after me and who cared for me and who basically believed in me in many respects. I never had that to begin with. That was uh, not something that I necessarily grew up with, but College of the Canyons in so many different ways provided all these channels, all these opportunities, and I am extraordinarily grateful for what it's provided me just yet and where I might be able to go on account of that. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Ernesto. Um, what a great testimony. Uh, and I wanna point out that as special as Ernesto is, he's not unique. Many students have had that experience through the community college program at College of the Canyon. So the two plus two is really the way to go. So I'm gonna show the screen again because we have one last slide. And that's basically our thank you slide. And this is how you reach me. Of course, Unibridge knows how to reach me. And I'm gonna turn this back over to uh, our hosts because they really speak for us in India. And so I'm gonna give it to them. Can I, can I add something to it, uh, Tim? Yes, please. So um, I thought, because we want to make sure that we have enough time for students to ask questions. And then later in about 15 minutes or so, um, Mr. Andy Simpson, who is in charge of our homestead program, will also be online uh, to take any questions. But I want to have a little dialogue with Ernesto, because I think this is a very rare opportunity. Um, I would, because Ernesto, you grew up here in Santa Clarita. So I would very much like you, and then you have traveled you know, across to the side of the country. So like what Tim was saying that earlier on, um, you can start at COC and you can pretty much go anywhere in the United States. So you chose uh, after COC, go to University of California, Irvine, and then you went to California State University, uh, Northridge and finished your degree there. And then you went directly to PhD program Mm -hmm. I'll skip pretty much the master program. Uh, go, go to the University of Florida. So I would like you to talk about kind of three things uh, briefly, if you can. One, sure. growing up in Santa Clarita, what is it like growing up in Santa Clarita? Because you're the one who experienced this city for a long time, uh, longer than I have. I'm here since 15 years, and you've been, uh, you grew up here. Two, as you went from Cal uh, COC to bigger university, what was it like? And three, in terms of um, how you, you spoke briefly, how COC prepare you for later, but in terms of the the area that you chose to study, because I believe you didn't decide to study political science. What is no. the transformational path that it took you to be able to say, oh, this is my passion. This is what I want to do. Because I think Mr. Robin will also know for students, mm -hmm. the most important thing is passion. We wanted to find something they truly believe in. Because any students, if you find a pathway, a major that you truly believe in, you will excel, regardless of what you do. So I'm really interested in these three things. If you don't mind briefly, kind of talk to us a little bit about it. And meanwhile, right now, we will encourage students to think about the questions that you want to ask us. So you can tap into the Q&A part of it, and then we'll address that after uh, it's a little dialogue with Ernesto. Thank you. Yeah, Dr. J, uh, can I interrupt in between for a second? So sure. I'm coming up with again another poll. Uh, Nupur, can we have the yes. poll, please? So let's see how many students are there and then uh, how much uh, concentration is there. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Just a second. Yeah. Check for understanding and is always a very good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how many campuses Ooh, CSU have? Uh, 9, 23, or 15? Yes, students, stand, start answering the question. So how many campuses uh, CSU have? That has been displayed in one of the slides by Tim. 
so let us see how many of them uh okay so it is 83 percent are saying 86 percent are saying 23 14 percent are saying 15 and there is no one for nine per, nine so 92 percent are now saying for 23 campuses eight percent are saying 15 good going you still have some time okay so 93 percent said 23 campuses that is the correct answer and seven percent said 15. so csu has uh, 23 campuses and uh, students please uh, keep typing your questions in the chat box so that your questions can be catered over to you ernesto thank you so much sure okay. Uh, thank you. I'd be happy to speak uh, very uh, briefly about those three themes, beginning with the very first one, the Santa Clarita Valley. Uh, I was I was born and raised in this region. My parents migrated from Mexico um, in the mid 80s. And so I was um, uh, in many respects, most of my form. And Clarita. Santa Clarita has experienced tremendous growth. I have seen the city transform in many significant respects. Um, I've, uh, I've experienced this, this massive transformation. This was one of the reasons I decided to go across the country. I wanted to experience something different. I wanted another environment to challenge me and to give me some sort of a, uh, um, um, a, a novel environment wherein I could test many of the things that I had learned. But in terms of Santa Clarita, it's gorgeous. It's my home. I'm biased. Uh, I'm not going to lie about that. Uh, it is um, geographically extraordinarily beautiful in terms of the flora and fauna. Uh, it's arid. It's it's um, mountainous, um, which I very much appreciate. Other parts of the country aren't necessarily like that, um, but it's my home. Um, I very much appreciate it here. Uh, I've uh, I've grown uh, very much accustomed to um, many of many of this environment. Um, in terms of COC, which I spoke about a little bit briefly, and the bigger universities uh, that I mentioned have an experience in. So I started in many respects at COC, which I spoke a little bit about. Now I'm going to speak about um, where I went afterwards. I went to the University of uh, uh, UC Irvine, and then I went um, to Cal State University Northridge. And so in conjunction with those three institutions, I also changed my, um, my uh, research emphasis dramatically. At one point, I was a business major. At another point, I was a sociology major. At another significant point, I was a philosophy major. And then ultimately, I ended up combining those in some sort of way, and I became a political theorist. And that is what I'm currently undertaking as my substantive research emphasis right now. But in many respects, that was on account of the kind of the flexibility and the freedom that um, an institution uh, like COC provided me because I could take so many different classes with so many different instructors that had so much knowledge that it just kind of all of this coalesced into where I'm at right now. But I think in many significant respects, it had to do with the things that were afforded to me and available to me at these institutions like College of the Canyons. Um, but in terms of how College of the Canyons differs, so UC, University of California, Irvine, which is a great school, by the way, which is where I majored in sociology. But one of the things that I noticed right away that was extraordinarily different from College of the Canyons was the classroom size. I would be in a lecture hall and I would be in, surrounded by 200 250 students oftentimes in this grandiose lecture hall that was extraordinarily beautiful but also at the same time that was just extremely overcrowded such that it there were so many teachers assistants and you could never not never but it was just very very difficult to speak directly to the instructor who was facilitating the course that wasn't the case at college of the canyons college of the canyons i had direct connection with many of these professors and I would oftentimes go to their office hours. This wasn't necessarily available to me at the universe at, at um, Irvine, right? And so hence, one of the positive net benefits of going to community college, like College of the Canyons. Um, and then the area that I chose to study, I've talked about this a little bit briefly, but 
I went through so many different cul-de-sacs and so many ins and outs in terms of finding what it was that I was truly passionate about. I mentioned some of those earlier, philosophy, business, sociology, so on and so forth. Ultimately, I came at political theory. Again, um, I, if I would have asked my younger self if this was the course of action that I would have taken, I wouldn't have known, I wouldn't have had the answer. I think this kind of like grew organically through all these experiences and through all these relationships that I developed at College of the Canyons that ultimately got me to this position where I'm at now, studying something that I genuinely and truly love, um, political theory. Uh, and yeah, uh, um, again, I think it has everything to do with that kind of early environment with those two kind of principles that I mentioned earlier um, that were just conducive to um, an environment of learning that um, was very, very um, instrumental for me and my purposes. That's terrific. Thank you. Thank you so sure. much. In the chat box, I kind of put in, yeah. yes, in the chat box, I put into a statement uh, some because it's, I come from Taiwan, so I didn't know you could change majors. I didn't know that you could change schools. Um, and then I got my master's and PhD here in the United States in English. Um, as you could probably remember from my title, I'm also a professor of English. I actually have been tenured twice by two universities, um, but I chose to come here in Santa Clarita because I absolutely love it here. So in this major, the reason uh, I was really interested in and this is a journey because my own daughter went through a similar one. Uh, you probably remember that diploma from the University of California, from Berkeley, Dana Chumavi, that's my daughter. So she did exactly what Ernesto did. She wanted to be a uh, design, material design major, later met the professor in business, loved it, wanted to study economy, uh, economics. And then by the time I knew it, she transferred to Berkeley uh, to study political science. So that kind of has a thing right there. First, of course, our political science department is just absolutely fabulous. The professors are, are phenomenal. And then the second one is because she was she was young, she was 16 when she started at my college. So she wasn't really sure what she wanted to do. Alyssa was a little older when he started, but in many ways, because of his background, he also wasn't sure that he wanted to do. Or well, no, he knew what he wanted to do, but later it turned out, wow, he had more interest than he thought. So this is a true example of some students who come to us who may or may not know what they want to do, but because the classes they take, because of counseling advisement that we provided for the students, they're able to find a pathway that they truly want. Sometimes they come because their parents are wanting to study something and realize I also like the other things. So we say you can double major. You can also have a major or minor. It's all about units that you take, the credits that you take. In, the, in California, especially in the United States, you are not caged into one major and one pathway. The beauty about studying in the United States is you have the options. You have the opportunity to be able to say, okay, I like this major, but I also love this one. That's why the first two years, the higher education system is designed, what we call general education. You'll be required, uh, like it or not, and good or bad, but you'll be required to take English, math, sociology, economics, athletic programs. You'll be required to do all of that. But because of that gentle nudge that you are putting into that classroom environment with passionate professors, you can truly see if that's what you want to do. And when you find that's the pathway that you want to do, no one can stop you. And that's what I really like, and it's a story I love, my daughter's journey, um, that we were telling people that if it's not a good system, if it's not a guaranteed program, I would not have put my own kid through the program. And of course, you know, essentially, it also saved me a lot of money, that even though we live in California as residents, it still is very expensive for higher education. But by going to College of Kenya the first two years and then I go to Berkeley, she was able to finish Berkeley in a year and a half, which, you know, at the age of 19, British Berkeley really has started her career and started her life so much earlier. And just overall, just over-rounded in many ways as a person that she developed into like what Ernesto is doing right here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. J. 
so now I would like to raise another poll since we are discussing about United States and uh, there's something special. So we must discuss about that. Dupur, can we have that poll, please? And by the time the yes. students can type their questions. When is the Independence Day of the United States? Is it 4th July? Is it 5th August? Or is it 2nd of October? Yes, students. Keep typing your answers. Keep submitting your answers. 80% says 4th July. 20% says 2nd October. Okay. Keep answering 88% 4th July, 13% 2nd October. There's no one for 15th August. 92% is saying 4th of July. 8% is saying 2nd of October. Keep submitting your answers. You still have some time. Come on. And, and do not, yeah. Close. <laughs> Okay, so the results are here. 92% said 4th of July. And yes, it is 4th of July. So today is the Independence Day for United States. And uh, I would like to wish uh, Tim, Anisto, Dr. J, on behalf of all the students of Tulas International School, all the staff member of Tulas International School, and on behalf of the staff members of UniBridge, a very happy Independence Day. And Thank it's you. our pleasure to have all of you to, tonight in this session, even if uh, you have your Independence Day, even if then you are uh, taking out time for us for the discussion. Thank you so much once again. Of course. So le let us uh, have the questions. So, Dr. J, if you want to discuss something else by that time, you can please carry on. Okay. Uh, should we start with the questions? Andy's trying to get in. Um, he says he's in the webinar. Do you see him listed there? Okay, let me just check. His camera, he's probably in as a uh, participant. So maybe his camera's not turned on. Yes, Andy is there. Andy is Simpson, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so students, we will be having uh, now and Mr. Andy Simpson, who will be speaking about the housing uh, society and uh, he takes care of the housing of the students. So he personally goes to each and every house to check whether the house is compatible for the students or not. So we are going to have him uh, on this session and he will explain a little bit about how he works. Here you are. Can you hear me? I can hear yes. you. Perfect. Good morning. Yes, this was a different way. Good morning. Way. Um, hi, Andy. Hi, hi. So, yes, hi. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Andy Simpson, and I'll be, um, you know, helping and providing the, the housing for any students uh, that will be coming to study at College of the Canyons. Um, it's what we do here is to make the process as simple and as easy as possible in transitioning from your home country to America and to College of the Canyons. Uh, and to make it as fun and as exciting as it can be uh, moving to a whole new country. Um, we, we make it as simple as possible um, and help you every step of the way, as I myself have done a lot of traveling and have been traveled the world and been, been that person in a foreign country um, that doesn't know anybody or just arrives at the airport by myself. Uh, and, does, and needs to, you know, all the help we can get. So I, uh, from the second that you or the students um, send your application in, um, I will be in constant contact with you. We'll be setting you up with homestay host. Um, and once you choose your host family, um, 
you, we will connect you with that host and you can ask them any other questions or anything you know regarding the home i will of course send pictures of the homes um and just so you are happy with where you'd be staying um i do visit every single home and host family personally just to make sure that it is the they are where they say they are they are a nice home the room is clean and safe and there's no you know nothing secretive going on in the home let's say so it's all about just making it as safe and secure as possible um once you have secured your host family and you're on your plane on the way over um i and the host will be at the airport to meet you uh, i'll have a sign with your name on it we'll have a welcome pack with sunglasses and um phone cards and bus passes and maps of santa clarita and uh, all types of gifts and goodies just to welcome you into america just to make sure you're you know set off from the second your feet touch the ground uh, we'll also take pictures together i'll take a selfie and then i will text your parents in whatever app or means um we've been communicating in uh, just so your parents know that um you're safe and i have you and i'm taking you to your host family so you're not lost at the airport or trying to you know work your way around la by yourself after a long flight it's you know i'll make sure you get to your host family nice and safe and then once you're at your host family obviously we'll get you set up in the home um in the room and make sure everything's everything's okay and set there um, the host family will help you uh, find your way around santa clarita they'll uh, locate the local bus and you know a bus stop and help you work out how to ride the bus um, with the free bus pass that i provide every month so you can ride the bus for free if you want to explore santa clarita uh, and easy transport tra uh, transportation to college of the canyons uh, if you, you don't want to walk or have any other means to get to college. Um, the host family will provide two meals a day, so breakfast and dinner. So you don't have to worry you know, about food the first couple of weeks. If you're unsure where the store is or things like that, the host family will provide the meals. Um, obviously, that continues through your entire stay, not just the first couple of weeks. But I know once you get acclimated and you find your favorite restaurants and you want to go out and find your own cuisine, um, then obviously, you know, you can cook for the host families as well. Don't get me wrong. They're happy to uh, experience your culture just the same way you want to experience our culture. So it's a whole, you know, everyone's benefiting, you know, from this. It's it's for everyone to, sh to share and do and, you know, all to make, you know, lifelong friends. But, um, so yeah, so, and it's always good if the students find new restaurants that I don't know about when you're out and exploring, you can always take me out with you to uh, whatever new restaurants you do find because I'm always down to eat new food. So it's, um, so yeah, so it's just about making that transition as easy and as simple as possible. Um, before or well, once you are here um from your arrival date to the orientation date um there's usually two to three weeks where that's the time we get you acclimated to santa clarita so you know your surroundings so you know you know you know where you're going where the store is where the school is where the bus is uh we will help you open your bank accounts i'll take you to the bank so your account can be open so you know you can transfer funds if need be from your parents uh, we'll get your phone sorted so you can talk to your friends. Um, and also in that time, we have a welcome party with Andy's homestay where I invite all the host families and all the other students so that everyone can see each other. You can talk to people who are in the same situation as you. Uh, you can see some familiar faces, some friends from home or make new friends uh, before school starts so that on the first day of school during orientation, um, you, you'll, you'll recognize a couple of faces, you'll know someone that you've seen once or twice before, just someone to say hey to, so you've got someone to sit next to, or at least say hello to on that first day of school, so you're not uh, completely lost, you know, because there's gonna be a lot going on once school starts, obviously. Um, so we just try and do that to break the ice, so you can make a couple of friends beforehand. And then, um, also, we put on nights like we go Tempin Bowling sometimes. We go to Six Flags Magic Mountain, which is our local theme park as an icebreaker. So you can see the local theme park if you're into um, roller coasters and things like that. Um, we can do all of these things just so you can experience all of Santa Clarita. And then once school starts um, and if you want to go again, 
or if there's anything else you want to do that you find that's out here let me know and we'll be happy to arrange another day out we'll make you know plans for anything like that um, obviously every students are into different things so I don't put on a mass blanket let's go here if there's a small group of four or five that want to go to something somewhere I'm happy to you know try and arrange something like that um, last time there was a couple of students here from Taiwan whose life dream was to watch a NBA base uh, basketball game so I, I got tickets and we arranged a basketball game to go and see the LA Clippers um, and it was just for three students that's they that was their dream so I made it happen and their parents are still texting me saying thank you thank you he has pictures on his wall so I mean it's just things like that that we'll try and do and you know it's whatever I can do to make it easy as possible it's not just all about school and learning we are here for fun as well right it's so um, it's you know these are just little bits and pieces that we've done over time that we, I know eases the situation just to transition you as easy as possible from home life to school life to new life in America I mean I'm not sure if you can tell but I am from England originally so I have done this journey I have trans transitioned to a new country and tried to make life here and learn all these new things um, so and I also did that once when I lived in China I lived in China for a year Dr. J and Tim I sent me and my wife to China to teach English for a year, uh, which was a great experience. But again, I was at the airport like, now now what? So it's these sort of experiences that um, make me understand what you're going to go through and I can make it as, as easy and as simple transition as possible. So if there is any other questions or anything that I may have missed, please feel free to ask. Um, I try and say I make the homes as there is an application you will fill in um, and with your requests or requirements or if you want to live with friends or things like that there are homes that have two or three rooms available in one home so we are able to put two two students or you know possibly three students together in on occasions and that's something we you know we'll try and try and do um, but you just you know just let me know and we'll match you up as best we can to make everything as smooth as and easy as possible but yes, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to help or answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much, Andy. It's really good to hear from the leader of the part of your life, which is not books and classes. And so uh, there you have it for, from Andy, very nice guy. You can tell very much cares about what happens with you. So with that, I'll turn it back over to our hosts. Thank you so much, Andy. Uh, so now the students uh, are quite familiar to Andy. So Andy is there to take care of their housing as well as whatever games they want to play. And he's there to arrange parties as well for them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you so much, Andy, for taking out time for our session uh, tonight, uh, today no. for you. No problem. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you. No Have a great meeting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Bye. So I think time to start with the questions now. Uh, first question that we have got uh, from Jeffrey Ahmed. Uh, the question is, uh, when do when we do online classes from CSU while doing schooling in Tulas, we are actually completing our undergraduate course by class 12 and, and then we transfer to a different college to do masters. Uh, I think Tim, there is a little confusion uh, regarding online classes uh, when the classes would be starting exactly and after 12th standard or the student is getting uh, confused with whether the classes would be starting uh, while he or she is doing uh, class 12. So can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so tell me when class 12 completes. Uh, it is in the month of uh, May, the results are uh, out. Mm -hmm. And then after class 12, what happens with the students next? They try to uh, get admission in the colleges. They had already right. applied. And at College of the Canyons, your coursework starts in August. Okay. So you have that time in between May and August. Now, we do have courses that start in June and mm -hmm. students are invited to do that but if they're busy with other things then we understand they can start in june 
and start taking courses. And then they start taking courses in August. And our online program is exactly the same time as our face-to-face -face program. So there's nothing different about the online. So if a face-to-face -face class was going to start, an online class starts at the same time. Okay, thank you. So do you think that uh, the students who have already appeared in grade 12, they are waiting for their results to be declared. So can they apply for online classes in your college? I would now? highly recommend that they do that. Um, we don't really know what's going to happen with the visa process. And so it's mm -hmm. better to start your academic journey earlier than later. And so we very much encourage all qualifying students to begin taking some courses online through our two plus two or one plus one plus two program right away. That's wonderful. If Thank I you so may, much, Tim. Yeah. yeah. If I may add just a couple points that may not be familiar with uh, Indian students. Number one, um, College of Kenya is starting there even though it's the late August. Like what Tim said, we have classes uh, throughout the year. So we have quite a few starting sessions. If the students cannot start in late August for whatever reason, maybe they're still deciding, which is okay. We also have another start day in October, in mid-October. And if students who want to just kind of weigh out with their options, we have started in um, January 2nd. And also the spring semester starting early February. In April, mid-April, we also have this start day. And I know that's a lot of details. The reason I mentioned that is, like what we have been go talking about throughout the section, the message is very consistent. The beauty about coming to college, especially college like College of Canyons, we're very flexible. It's what we call open access. We want to provide as many opportunities for students to start in college in the United States as possible. That's the mission of our college. We are trying to remove all the barriers possible for the students going from us to CSU, then do a master's degree. So don't. if you have any questions, you need Bridge have our, our contact. Mr. Robin has our contact. You can ask any question that you want. As simple as, well, if I want to start on October, October, what do I, what class do I have to take? We will put you in touch with our counselor. You will have a one on one appointment with the counselor to talk about potential pathways that you can take in terms of classes. So you can start, we even have classes July 10, but we probably will take a few days to get paperwork in. So this is, you don't make July 10, that's okay. August 22nd, whatever that Monday is, you can start because now we don't have to wait for the visa. Now what happens when you start, you say, I'm still waiting for other universities, but I don't know if I want to go to other universities. They're online anyway. What our recommendation is, then don't leave India yet. Take the classes with us because that, well, you, can, you can transfer those classes to CSUs if you're already accepted by CSU, to UCs if you're already accepted by UC. And even if you're accepted by NYU, we have students transfer to NYU or Columbia University or University of Pennsylvania or Harvard as UC. So our message to you is don't let the world slow you down. Don't let that one star day that you missed slow you down. At the College of the Canyons, we'll always provide opportunities for you to catch up or even run ahead by, like many of our students have done. Thank you, Dr. J. So you have, uh, I think uh, Jeffrey and Ahmed has got the answer. Uh, so now whenever you want, you can apply. And if you have still have any question, any of the students, for applying to the college, uh, you can always connect with Mr. Robin and uh, then you'll be getting a correct answers to the College of Kenyans. So coming to the next question, uh, it's uh, the second question is from Shezeb Rafiz. Uh, what are the courses that the college provides to the students? That's a good question and we get asked that question a lot and um, I wish I could talk with with the student directly to clarify the question, but basically there's two ways to think about it. The question really usually means is like, what area am I going to study? Like what what is available for me to study? Is it engineering or is it, uh, is it teaching or is it business or is it physics? And the answer to that question is we have every area of study that is available in California. We have every, every major. 
And so it doesn't matter what you want to study, whether it's religious studies or whether it's business, we have it, everything in between. So I think that the, the, that's the best way to think about it is you have everything. The second um, way to look at this is like specifically, like what classes do I take? And the way the school system is set up in California is you take a wide variety of classes for your first two years, um, generally oriented towards what you think you might want to study, but they're very kind of general education to make you a well-rounded citizen. And that's how all university is done in the United States. Then you start focusing on taking your classes for your degree, usually starting the second year, which as we know now is the sophomore year, and continuing through your senior year. You'll take classes which are specifically about the area you want to study. So that first year is really sort of an overview of all, all things in, in the general proximity of your area, and then after that you start focusing. So there's two answers to the question. One is you can major in anything. You can Your course of study can be in anything. And the other one is that you start out with everything and then you narrow it down from there. So Afshat, Academic? can do you mind um, sharing my, um, I think I'm trying to share a screen it's because I think that question is like what Tim says asked many times that some students would need to see what programs are we actually offer. And then Tim is actually correct. We, we offer everything, but students sometimes still don't know. It's like, but what is it that you guys offer? So I'm going to see if I can, okay, share my screen here. Can you see my screen? Uh, see my screen? Uh, not yet. Of yeah, the, we can the see list. the screen now. Okay. Okay, can, so, so students should be able to see the list of classes. And I know it's a lot. I know it's overwhelming. And that's part of the reason the team said everything that, that you can uh, you can see. Can you, can you see the popular academic programs on your screen? Yes, your your screen is showing. Okay, yes. very good. The reason that we want to show this is, like what Tim said, we would love to be able to talk to you uh, in person, you know, or uh, through Zoom, or our counselor will. As you can see, doesn't matter if you want to study arts, business, or anything like science. You can, we get more than a hundred majors and certificate programs. Unless you want to study, I, I would say maybe one thing, um, animal husbandry, which you will still start with us, with biology, with all everything. And then you would choose a lot more specific area that you want to major in. So I just thought that I would show that um, for you to see that at the College of Kenyans, we do have pretty much every single major that you can think of. You later, you want to become a doctor, so you will do what we call pre-med. So before pre-med, you come to us to do biology. You come to us to do chemistry. And then when you transfer to UCLA, you transfer as pre-med, right? Or you said, okay, I'm not sure because I maybe want to do pre-med and maybe I want to be a researcher. Okay, then then you what we do what we call liberal arts in science, which allows you to transfer to so many universities and still provide you that focus as well as the flexibility. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. J. Uh, so coming to the next question. Um, what will be the fee structure? It, is, it has been asked by Somang Agrawal. Yeah, Jim, can you please answer the question for the fee structure? The fee structure is very simple. Uh, you pay for the classes that you take. So uh, a, a typical normal class, which is uh, transferable to University of Berkeley, uh, cost a little bit less than $1,000 or right around $1,000. And so if full course load uh, will cost between twenty twenty five thousand dollars or uh, for your whole stay the whole time in uh, at College of the Canyons. So it's uh, it's very affordable in comparison to all the other schools in the United States. 
So plan on, um, if you come here face to face, you're gonna spend about $5,000 a semester US. Uh, if you are taking courses from India, you can take a full course load or you can take a half course load and we can, and the price is adjusted. And so we do our pricing based on the cost of the classes. Thank you, Tim. So the next question is for Nubur and me. The question is by Jeffrey Nehmer, and the question is, what is Unibridge exactly? Thank you so much, Jeffrey, for being so curious about us. So Unibridge basically uh, help international universities to get connected with high schools in India. So you can get the details afterward to Robin also, and you can connect to me directly if you want the answers. Thank you so much. The next question is again by Jeffrey Nehmer. Uh, online classes are not for people in class 11. It uh, and that's be. an interesting Depends. question. So yeah, go ahead, Dr. J. Go ahead. No, no, no. go ahead. So the rules for um, taking a university level class in the United States are for College of the Canyons is that you have either completed your secondary education, your high school education, if you remember that slide, and then the, or if you are 18 years old, which is the age of majority in the United States, if you have accomplished either one of those, you qualify to take courses. So typically the 11th year, may not be 18 years old and you may not have finished yet your secondary education. And so typically uh, you don't start your university classes. Now we have worked on programs where students who are younger do take some coursework and we can work on that for you individually through Unibridge if that's how it works. Thank you. So uh, the next question is, do we require the SATs? If not, then how do we apply to a college which requires SAT scores or AP exams? So College of the Canyon, so let's put it this way. You're at Tulis. If you complete secondary education at your high school, we know all about your high school. You do not have to take a test. It's that simple. And you can begin taking the university classes through College of the Canyons. Um, if you, uh, and so if you have not taken the SAT, you will never need to take the SAT once you start with us. I think you remember how my daughter was accepted to do all the universities, uh, including George Washington University, which is excellent university in Washington, D.C., uh, you know, University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, which you know, like again, another really excellent university. She has never taken S SAT. She had never had them to take all, well, AP, she didn't even take one AP class because the college, the reason to take AP classes is so that you prove to the college that you, uh, the university you want to apply to that you can do advanced work, right? That's called advanced placement, or that's what AP is. But because she started taking college classes, she already proves she can take college classes and get excellent grades. So she had, she got accepted by all those universities without having to take either SAT or any kind of AP classes. So by the time that you come to us, you're going to blood. Now, Mr. Robbins, we'll communicate with him. If he recommends a student to take the classes with us, he's over 18 or she's over 18, and then if Mr. Robin thinks that this student is mature, is really qualified, is really good with online classes, we will work with you to get you into college classes right now. And then when you uh, um, decide to come to the United States, either you come to COC or you want to transfer, transfer those units to those, let's say, University of Virginia. You can. So the whole message basically in, uh, in consistency, I hope that you hear us. We want to help you. We want to help you achieve your American higher education dreams as much as early as possible. That's the reason that we choose schools like to us, because with a good school, with the partnership that's being established, we don't want students to able to jump through all the hoops about having to take SAT, spend a lot of money taking AP classes. And if you ha already have IB classes, we can even count those IB classes as part of your college class. 
So there are a lot of details that we, we can't or don't want to go into here. And that's what our concerts are for. And that's why we told us, you know, we will help and work with your school administration to have to arrange appointments for you and our counselor. The counselor will spend a good hour with you, get to know you, what you want to do, what classes you can take right now, and in conjunction approval from Tula to make sure that also fit into the plan for you. And our sincere uh, uh, sincere desire for you to succeed is not just about have one more student, because we believe having more Indian students in the United States or study with us with our local students is really good, but it's beneficial to our students as well. We don't want our students to know about India as just for the news. We want our students to know about India because they have a classmates from India. So that's that's really, you know, it's two-way street. International education is two-way street. So even you're 17 and a half, apply now. If it's okay with Mr. Robert, right? Apply now. And then when you apply, by the time everything, the semester ends and all that, you turn 18, you'll be able to take classes with us right away. And, and just to add to that, to really clarify the application process, we know that universities have these very detailed, complex processes to screen through the students and choose the best ones for the school. That's not how it works with my school. Remember, my school is to make it so that you are successful as a bachelor degree student, not to try to only take the top students because lots of students will complete and do well. They become better students the more college they take. So to apply to my school, all you have to do is send me an email. Mr. Robin will say, please, uh, admit this student and we will start the process. Of course, there's paperwork, but it's not hard. Um, and so we'll get all of that taken care of. But to start with, you just send an email and that's it. It's very simple. And I'll share the slide again that has the email address on it because it's really, it's so easy to do. It doesn't have to be this hard process that uh, like some people think that it needs to be. So. So I'll put that slide up while Dr. J um, shares. Well, thank you, Tim. Uh, the next question is again based on uh, SAT or ACT. Uh, like, do we have to give SAT or ACT exam for taking admission? As you've already explained, so SAT and, uh, is required to getting admission in the university directly, and uh, College of Kenyans does not need any uh, SAT or ACT scores, right? Uh, the next question right. is, uh, yeah. The next question is, uh, could you please inform us about job opportunities and placements after completion of any course? It is from um, Sir Raman Koshal. Very good question. Yes, one of the flagship offerings that College of the Canyon has is that after you finish your sophomore year, which remember from the poll, that's the second year. After you finish the sophomore year, you get a job, and, and we have a program for helping you. You get a job for one year working for a firm in your area of expertise. So if you want to study sociology or if you want to study business or if you want to study physics, you're going to work in that area for a company. Then after up to one year, it can be less. Maybe it's just a summer job. After one year, then you'll work. You'll go back to school for two more years. And that's when you graduate with your bachelor's degree as a senior. Then you go to work again. So you're going to have two work periods where you get a job in the United States, and that can be very useful for applying for jobs when you go home after you're all finished. So those two work periods are two opportunities. When the campus is having people on present on campus, lots of people, there'll be lots of jobs on campus. And so when you come for face to face, there may be jobs on campus, but keep in mind, the job on campus, that's really for um, pizza money, you know, for, uh, for going out to the movies. It's not money for uh, paying tuition. The paying tuition money comes from elsewhere. This is just money for spending money. So before you come, when you're in the one plus one plus two, you don't need a job. It's after you finish that second year of the two plus two. That's when you want your first job. And then of course, again, when you finish your bachelor's degree at the end of the two plus two, 
that's when you want your second job. Thank you, Tim. We also, uh, we also have very, so, uh, just one. Uh, we have very strong internship and career center that will send up job opportunities every Wednesday. And we, because um, I, I think we have mentioned that this is a very wealthy um, community, which means the industry here, our movie industry, um, the biotechnology industry, aerospace industry. So after you finish with us, and then you want to have what we call OPT, um, which allows you to work for one year before you move on or, be, or before you go home. There are a lot of job opportunities here. And some students actually create their own company. Uh, we have students who create their own company and we're able to do a lot of stuff. And you know, we have a um, career center that would help you how to do your resume, how to do interview, uh, what are the law and regulations. So the CRC is, a, is, is pretty incredible that way. We want to make sure students just don't come to us and then finish a degree. We want to make sure you reach to you reach your goal. If your goal is I want to have that internship, we will help you to polish your resume, how to dress for success, which Tim is excellent about it. Uh, students love his sections on how to dress for success and how to do interview. Um, and then I'll help you. We'll connect you to many internship opportunities or job opportunities. And of course, it's up to you to get that job. But we will really prepare you to the point of hopefully getting that interview and then get the job that you want at, the, at least in a um, optional practical training time. We have not had to send back one student yet at, in the five years I've been at the international office. We have not had to send back one student because the student didn't get a job. Thank you, Dr. J. Uh, the next question is from Mohammad Habib. Uh, he wants to know what is the minimum CGPA required for admission? So are those grades, are you talking about marks, the minimum or marks in class, the grades in class? So yeah, our, after any 12. Right. So uh, if you're coming from TULAS, then what we don't, all we require is that you successfully get a diploma. So you can have top marks or not top marks. It won't matter to us because you're coming from Tulas. Thank and, you, Dan. You know, that sounds, I want to add to that. It sounds like, oh, well, then it's a very easy school to get into, College of the Canyons. You're right. It is very easy. All of the hard work starts once you're in. Our classes are very difficult. They are world-class classes. That's when the hard work starts. Uh, you're demonstrating what you do in high school is important uh, at Tulas, but completing at Tulas is good enough for me. And then, like we said, if you are still in Tulas and then you are 18, for example, your third year, and you haven't finished, right? So we would like to talk to Mr. Robin because we will need a recommendation from your school letting us know that you are actually a good candidate for online class for uh, um, college classes so we will work closely with your school if you're still in school and then if you're finished like what tim said you went to us and then we would look at your transcript you give us a you, there's a proof that it's uh, complete that's how we work with the uh, partner schools across the globe we have partner school in china in france Students, you know, if they are not sure uh, if they can do it or not do it, we want to have a conversation. We have a business school in, in France. So sometimes students come to us and we say, okay, we need to kind of talk to the mission, uh, well, the international department that's sending the students, because our goal is for you to be successful. If you take a lot of classes at the beginning and you didn't do it right, and you could think, oh, college is not for me. That's not true, right? You just may not have taken the right class. So it's very important for us to work with the schools that you come from, especially if you're still in school. If you're still in school, we would love to be able to work closely with your teachers, with the head teachers, or whoever your counselor is. And then that way, we don't want to conflict with what you're doing right now. Our goal is to enhance what you're doing right now at your school work closely with your school counselors. So your success is guaranteed. So everything else is really on you. If you're willing to work on it, if you're willing to get an A, you will get that A because we have a lot of 
peripheral supports like the free online tutoring, unlimited. You can see the tutor three times a day. But they still used to work at the tutoring center. Do you want to talk just a few words about tutoring center just very quickly? Sure. So I worked at the uh, TLC lab, which is the teaching learning center, and it was one of the best, most formative experiences uh, of my higher education life and career. Um, but I basically worked there as an English subject writing tutor and as a philosophy tutor. And it was great because I would sit there one on one personal interaction um, with students and discuss their writing, their ideas, their the structure and the coherence. And I would just give suggestions and advice. And it was, as an educator, it was um, one of the, some of the best training and experience I've had um, for this line of work. And so this is available to all COC students just on account of being there as a student. And now Ernesto has come back to us. In addition to TLC service that you get, you get different kind of tutors. If anything in subject area of soci sociology, political science, English, we will have, we'll ask Ernesto to help you. But again, it all comes to the partnership, right? Uh, part of the reason we're so excited about this student connect because you come from one school and we talk to your school heads. We like how, you know, we, after we talked to your school heads last week, we like it. We say, well, this would be great to talk to students directly, and that's why we're here. Thank you, Dr. J. Uh, thank you, Ernesto. Uh, so students need not to worry if they want, uh, if they have uh, UCLA, UC Berkeley, like universities as they bring universities, I would say if there is a will, there is a way. So COC is a way to get their will done. Uh, the next question that we have is from Tanish Jaiswal. Uh, I think the student is uh, looking forward for your opinion about the exam during this, pan this pandemic situation. Is, is, is this a burden for the students? Uh, I think we would, we all would say yes, it is a burden under this situation, but COC is there to help them out and they don't need any exam scores. Yes, Dr. Jai, what would you like to say? Yeah, if we're talking about the exams for the classes that students are enrolled in, um, that is part of the part of the system and so there's no problem if we're talking about exams for entering into university yes there's a big problem uh, sat is a group class place meeting and you can't take sat so if you're trying to take the sat to go to a school uh, you can't yeah you have to go to college of the canyons thank you tim uh, next question is from Kumar Agamdeep Jain. Can we opt for two courses at the same time? The answer to that is yes. Thank you. Uh, another question is from Jeffrey Emmer. The transfer requirement says 30 credits. Uh, he wants to know what are these credits? Yeah, that's a good question because credits or units or hours, it gets confusing because different schools call it different things. But let's think of it this way. If you are in an English 101 class, which everybody takes in the entire United States, that class, let's say, is four units or four credits, then what that means is there's four hours a week of live instruction, either online through the Canvas portfolio or face to face. So there's four hours of instruction. That's what that means. And based on the Carnegie rule, that means there's also for every hour in class, there's an additional two hours expected from you out of class. So a four unit class, you can just figure that it's going to take you 12 hours a week of work to accomplish everything at your optimized level for that class. So that's what that means. When you transfer, transfer is not the same as applying. Applying is what you're doing as a freshman. Transfer is what you do as a junior. It's not, you're not applying to the school, you're transferring to the school. Now the school still has to accept you, but it's a very different process. So the units that you transfer or the credit hours that you transfer or the classes that you transfer are all of the classes you took at College of the Canyons. And we'll work out all the details with our academic advising as you progress through the sophomore year. 
So if you want to transfer from COC to become a junior at UC, you do need to have a minimum of 60 units. So if you look at every degree is roughly 120 units to graduate. So roughly 30 units for each year that you are in college. Some engineer degrees are gonna take 150 units. Depends on the major, but the first two years, that's the part of the reason it's really good to start at um, the community college is, it's pretty much all the same, very similar in that sense. So the first year, hopefully you take about 30 units. The second year, you, um, 30 units. And then by the time you transfer, you're in 60. Some students take more. But if you want to transfer as junior, if you don't reach 60 units, you can't transfer as junior. You transfer as a sophomore the second year. So those are just terms. But if you kind of think about, let's say you start from India. When you turn 18, you stand two up, right? That's fine. You take two classes while still finishing your high school diploma. So it might take you a total of two and a half years. Half year in India when you're still in high school, but you're 18 years old. You come to CSC for two years, or you have one and a half years in India. You come to CSC for one year. But when you're in high school, we probably don't want you to take four classes or 12 or 15 units because that's a lot. Um, you also don't have us right there, even though we are we are pretty much available 24 seven, but you still don't have us right there. Cause say, hey, how's it going on? You know, you know, TLC, yes, it's all available, but there's a time difference, right? So we'll recommend one or two classes at the beginning if you're still in high school. But if you graduate, your English is really good. Your math is really strong. Let's go ahead and take 15. And that's, I cannot emphasize enough, we have three advisors. You will always get an appointment between 24 to 48 hours with an advisor. So that way we can see what classes you need to take because we want to ensure the classes that you take, you'll be able to transfer. So the units that you're talking about, that you're thinking about, don't, don't worry that much of it because that's our job. Our job is to make sure that you go through the sequence of the classes that you're supposed to take. And your job, two things. One, when you don't know, you ask us, right? And then two, after we've had to put in the path, right pathway, you really work. You work and work and work to get that A. So Berkeley will, will ask you to come. Like what they asked my daughter to come because she was going to go to George Washington University in Washington, D.C. And then Berkeley said, well, we'll take more units from you. So she transferred to Berkeley 70 units already halfway through the junior. That's the reason she finished Berkeley in a year and a half. And it happens all the time to our international students and domestic students. Thank you, Dr. J. Uh, the next question is from Sneha Gupta. Uh, she wants to know about the unique features that COC provides and how COC differs from other colleges. Yeah, good question. Because as a student, you, you have so many choices and you need to find a choice which is going to work best for you. And that's what our goal is. So what is unique about College of the Canyons is four things. Number one, it's what it's designed for that transfer. So remember, it's two plus two or one plus one plus two. You have to make that transfer in order to get that bachelor's degree. So what's unique about College of the Canyons is we specialize in that transfer. Another thing that's unique and special about College of the Canyons is its location. We're within one hour of a major airport. We're in a very, very safe city, and our city is designed for students. Santa Clarita is a school city, so it's designed to be a good place for from kindergarten all the way up through university. That's why the entire city exists. The people who move here move here because they care about what happens at school for their children. The third thing is you have the options of going to all these California schools. We have 23 California State Universities and we have all of the University of California's and California has a lot of really good schools and it's really easy transfer. And the last thing, which I think is the most important thing you should remember that if we did a poll and it said of the four things for why you should pick College of the Canyons, which one is the most important, I would say, You've got me. I'm at College of the Canyons. And if you've got me, then you've got somebody who's going to help you all the way through your process. 
So those are four things that are unique about College of the Canyons. And it's what differs from the other schools. Great, thank you, Tim. So uh, the next question is, uh, what will be the fee structure? That question is asked by Samang Agrawal. Yes, good question. The fees are structured based on the courses that you take. And a course, all the courses have units or credit hours. We talked about units just a minute ago. So if you take a normal regular course, like a three unit course, then you would pay for those three units. If you take English 101, for example, that's four units. And each unit is 350 US dollars. So depending on the course, a course is gonna cost about $1,000, let's say, for your entire freshman year, which most students accomplish in about one year, maybe a year and a half, it's gonna cost about $30,000 total for all your, for your entire time while you're here as a student, and then you transfer. So your one year cost is about $10,000 if you're going full-time. If you take a half course, then it's half that price. So we structured this so that students could take classes from home and not have to pay the full university price, even though they weren't taking the full university course load. So that's how our pricing works. Thank you, Tim. Um, let me check if I have any other question from the students. I guess most of the questions we have covered already. Right. Is there anything else uh, anybody wants to ask? I guess we are done with the question round. We'll talk to Mr. Robin if you have any questions. You can talk to me if you have yes. any questions. And uh, you can see my email is right here. And so you can send us an email. We, uh, this has been really good. The Tula students, I have to say, have asked the best questions of all the schools we've talked to. Uh, so something's Tim, going I wrong. Am, I am so sorry Tim, uh, we uh, to have interrupt. A hand raised Okay, the we email. Have a hand Tim. Raise. Okay, but um, I need to correct something first, Tim. The email that's on the slide, it should be .edu, not .com. Can you change that and then repost that, please? I just catch that. My apologies. I'm so sorry. Hello. Thank you. So sorry. Yes. So sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we have a hand raised by Adriti Mehti. Uh, Adriti, can you please ask your question? Uh, Ma'am, actually, my question is that can we opt for two different subjects from two different fields? Like, suppose arts and science. Can we do that? Yes, yes you can. If you come to College of the Canyons, you can study whatever you want and as much as you want. Okay, thank you, sir. In fact, I'll it. add to that just one quick, quickly. That studying two things is very popular. In fact, there is a California State University that we work with that has a master's degree that is a combination business administration and biotechnology. So you get a master's degree in both of those fields. And that's a very important degree to have because in order to understand biotechnology, the business administration part is very important. And in order to understand business administration, the biotechnology part is very important. So the two combined work well. So studying more than one thing is very common in the United States. And through College of the Canyons, you can study two of anything that you want to study. Thank, Thank you, you sir. for your question. Thank you, Tim. Uh, we have one You're more welcome. question. Mm -hmm. That is from uh, Tanish Jaiswal. Tanish, can you hear us? I think Tanish connections has been lost. So it was there, there was a hand raised by him. No issues, we can uh, move forward. 
Nubu, do we have any new question in the question tab? We do. Uh, let me we have actually. Yeah, can you please read out? Yeah, the first one is from Janvi, and it right. talks about the procedures for uh, taking admission after you finish your school. So, um, Mr. Robin will help you, but what you'll do when you finish school at Tulas is you'll send an email to me, and that email will say, I am from Tulas. This is my name. I want to come to your school and we will start the paperwork process with you. It's not hard. So that's all you have to do when you decide to come. Okay? She next, also asked this question okay. that, uh, do we have to give SAT or ACT in, uh, in taking admissions? I guess uh, we already answered that. Yeah, that's a very good question. We get asked that a lot, and we often get it asked more than once uh, because right. it's very hard really to really understand that uh you know it's it's hard to really grasp that really no test i have to state this again if mr robin says college of the canyons is the right school for you that's all i need to know you're coming from tuna school and you're coming from mr robin so that's all you need i don't need the sat test thank you tim uh yaman sharma do you have any question We have a question from Tanish. Okay, so the next question is from Tanish. What will happen in the education system if coronavirus doesn't uh, has an end? So a very right. good question, I would say, looking at the current situation. Yes, it's a very good question. So coronavirus may take a long time to be solved. In the meantime, what you'll do is you'll start taking classes with College of the Canyons. You'll take as many classes as you can at College of the Canyons during this whole time. Then you'll start taking classes at your next school. And we have two years to figure out how we're gonna make that work. And we have two years for the California State University system to adjust, to accommodate you. Eventually, I think that through technology yeah. and through science, we will solve the coronavirus problem and we will be able to go back to getting college degrees. We'll never go back to how it was before because some things are better, like the learning environment online through Canvas. It, in a lot of, for a lot of people, it's a better environment than actually coming to a classroom and just listening to a teacher and taking notes. So a lot of things are here to stay and a lot of things we look forward to having come back to the way they were. Thank you, Tim. The next question is from Kumar Amandeep Jain. Uh, working while doing college, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. So there's two ways to answer the work question. We get asked this question a lot. It's very important. If you wanna work, think about why you're working. What is the purpose? If you're working to earn money, to pay tuition, we don't have anything like that. No one does. If you're working to have extra money for going to the movies and buying uh, you know, pizza, yes, we have that when you come uh, live to California. We also have another work time. That work time is in between the two plus two. You can take a work period. And the purpose of that work period though, that's to get you experience in the area you wanna study. So if you're studying business, you go to work in a business environment. If you're studying engineering, an engineering environment. That's what the purpose of that job is. And it gives you a little bit of money for pizza and for the movies. Uh, again, it's not for paying tuition. This is money, extra money, but really the purpose is what matters. The purpose for on-campus jobs, when you actually come to California, that's for extra money and for fun. The purpose of the work period after two years is to gain experience in your field of study. So that's the purpose of work, and that's how work operates. Thank you, Tim. Good question. Now I'm coming up with a very bold and straight question by Sneha Gupta. Right. 
what is the biggest challenge a student would face in canyons yes <laughs> i like that question uh, by the way uh, that's a bold question however it gets asked from students from all over the world it gets asked from students right here in my hometown sometimes so the biggest challenge is that you're going to be entering university level classes these courses are not easy these courses are the same courses you would be taking at ucla or berkeley these courses are hard they require you to consider being a university student as if it was your full-time job so you will be required to do that now right now during COVID times i think that there's a little bit of a double-edged sword because it used to be the answer to that question was acclimating to being far away from your family but now you're not going to be far away from your family because you're going to start taking classes now from home so that's not the biggest problem so now your biggest problem is the number two problem which is courses are hard they require university level effort you have to stay organized you have to stay focused and you have to utilize the resources that i provide you just like ernesto talked about about the tutoring you have to utilize the office hours with the professor you have to talk to your classmates which is all done through the canvas program that you use for your online classes so i think that's probably your best the best answer to the question for today, since you're going to be at home when you start these classes. Thank you, Tim. The next question is from Mr. Uh, Raman Kaushal. What sort of study material will be provided to the students during the lockdown period? You will have everything you need when you sign up for a course. So you will be shown how to get your textbooks if there's any textbook you have to buy they're electronic um, you will be given all your lessons you will have your meetings with the professors you will have the meetings with your other classmates all of these things are all on this canvas format so you will get all the study materials that you need for university level class remember we're not just doing this because of covid we've been doing online classes at college of the canyons for a long time this is just an extension of the program to now having international students do online classes because international students have not always done lots of online classes. So there's your answer. You're gonna have everything you need. That's wonderful. Thank I you so much, Tim. Yeah, if yeah. I can add just a little bit to it. For example, uh, we understand when we move online, some students may not have adequate computer to work with. So you know what my college did? <laughs> if you are here in the United States, if you're enrolled in a summer class, you get a free laptop, give it to you. You don't have to return it. We don't want it back because we want you to keep it to keep doing your homework. So we moved online in March. Immediately after a week, Tim and I with quite a few deans and vice president, we stand up in our parking lot. So all students do need to do is drive up, show us on their phone, they enroll in a class, we get them a laptop. Similarly, summer happened. So we, we got more money from the government and also we, our town, like what Tim was saying, is really built for the school. We raised more money, we got more laptop. Those laptops better than my <laughs> laptop. Um, those are Dell brand new laptops. So all students need to do, they drive up to a parking lot, we have many of them, 13 of them, one of them, uh, 15 actually, if they have a, a parking lot 15, and then you have VPs, deans like me, directors like Tim, we, and then our tech, technology support, we literally line up. You show us, you enroll in a summer class, here's a laptop, what's the requirement? You have to get an A, <laughs> you have to pass the class. So that's how much College Canyon is doing in helping these special circumstances. And that is just one way to show that regardless of what the condition will be we will try to solve the problem are we going to solve everything all the problem in the world i'm not going to say we will because that would not be true but anything with related to school anything to do with student success maybe encounter issues as long as we know 
the only time we couldn't solve problems of what students needs because we don't know. If you don't tell us, we don't know how to solve the problems that are out there. But, if, but when we move online, we realize a lot of students only have their cell phone. They don't have a good laptop because they always go to school with a lab, uh, computer lab. Students have, uh, our campus have many, many fancy computer labs. So students didn't need a laptop. But when we move online, they have to do homework at home. They may have one laptop, three siblings, and mom and dad also working from home. So students don't have a laptop, no problem. So we solved that for you. Yes, you. if you're in India, we cannot ship a laptop to you. <laughs> I just want to tell you right now. But it just to show you, if you're here, you also have a lot more resources. Yes, you can do two plus two, two years in India, two years in the transfer. That's okay too, but you need to experience college of Canyons. You need to experience the people, the town, the professors here in person. So when the COVID is settled and everything got opens up again, the moment that you can leave the country, the moment that the world start talking to each other again, hop on that airplane, come to see us, come and study with us. I think you will like it. You, you, you love the beautiful campus and the, all the resources that are available to you only because you're a college Canyon student. Thank you, Dr. J. Uh, next question is uh, from Tanish Jaiswal. I'm, I think Tanish is uh, not liking to give, give exams. So again, the question is, I would like to ask why most of the schools are taking exams if it is a burden for students. I think this, this question should be addressed to Ms. Robin Shetri. <laughs> so yeah, shall I move to the next one? Uh, Tanish, that's, that's, that's a good question, but you, we need to understand even we are going through a rough patch right now, you know, due to this COVID-19, but learning development never stops. You know, you cannot stop learning at any age of your life. So we guys have to understand that these examinations just to assess, to understand that what Tanish has grabbed, what kind of help we can give to you and what kind of support the school can give to the student or the college can give to the student. So we should not afraid test uh, learning process should not stop this COVID-19 will eventually go away. But what will be left is how we utilize these times. So you have enough time. You have the 24 hours clock, you know, have, you know, that's what you learn in, in, in boarding school. That's what we taught you, you know, get up early in the morning, have a scheduled life to get success. You have to have a schedule in your life. You, you need to have a routine without routine. You cannot get to into a success. So you know, utilize those things that you've learned. And, uh, you know, we're not assessing you, you know, very much, but then, you know, whatever we are teaching you, we have to understand that we are on the same page or not. So yes, taking examinations are is important and uh, eventually you will also get the idea of it, why it is. Thank you, Robin. He has another question. Uh, I would like to address that question to Tim and Dr. J. Uh, what qualifications do we need to become a game designer? Yeah, game design is a very popular major. So there are bachelor's degrees in California for game designing. And so you will take a four year course of study for a bachelor's degree in game design. You'll work in the game design field after two years at College of the Canyons. And then you'll work in the game design for a game design company after your fourth year as a senior. So the qualifications that you'll need is if you go through the academic process, is a bachelor's degree in game design computer technology. Thank you, Tim. Uh, another question is from Janvi Agrawal. Why COC is more better college than other colleges in U USA? Right, so there's a couple of things that make College of the Canyon stand out. Now keep in mind the two plus two program has over three million students taking the two plus two right now. That all three million are not at my college. So there are other community colleges. So if you want to live in a different state like South Dakota, if you wanna live there, then you find a community college in South Dakota. If you wanna live in Southern California though, then you come to College of the Canyons. So is it better? Some of the things that make College of the Canyons better is the easy access to the California university system. So that makes it better than the community colleges that are outside of California. And so if you want a safe environment as a freshman, if you want a strong international student program, and if you want access to every major available in the entire world, 
And if you want access to the California State University systems, then you come to College of the Canyons. And you have me. And I think that's the most <laughs> important thing that you have, Tim. <laughs> you have Ernesto. Um, because sometimes the most difficult part for international students is that at the beginning, the confusion part of what do I do, what classes I take. So some universities has 3,000 international students and they have five people taking care of 3,000 international students, if not many. So we want students to look at not just what university, you also, the mo more important part for international students, you need to look at the international program. Who are in charge of international program? Can you walk into international office? Then you have an AJ, our staff, sitting right there who knows who you are, who knows your name, which country you're from, which university you want to transfer to, do you play sports or not? That's more important sometimes than the name brand university that you dream so much go into, but then you get so lost in the midst of it. With students after finish college in Kenya, go to University of uh, uh, UC Santa Barbara. He went there visit twice in the summer. He got so excited and I'm going to use Santa Barbara, it's very nice. He came back, Dr. J, I couldn't find the international office. I said, well, did you call him? Did you ask? Well, I called him three times, nobody answered. So I drove up there just to see if I can talk to them. And I couldn't find, even find the international office. And then I said, okay, so you know, we call and then find out where they are. So he went again a week later, this is her young. Uh, like later he said, but I went there, I couldn't talk to any counselor. I have to wait and I wait and I wait. And I said, can I talk to a counselor? And the student worker said, well, they're very busy, you have to make an appointment. I said, but I call and nobody answers. I'm not saying UC Santa Barbara is a bad school. <laughs> I'm just saying when it comes to some colleges and universities, they may not have the same mission when it comes to international students. For us, we, we're a big college, we're 32,000 students at our college. And out of the 30,000 students, we have currently 200 international students. We got 20 staff, full time and part time. What you see here, full time, full time alone, right there, taking care of you. Plus the support staff that we didn't list all of them, plus student workers, international students and domestic students who are your international student mentors. Before you come, we give you a mentor, students like you. Who, were, who went through the same thing, a similar experience, a similar feelings that you had half a year or a year ago. So you can talk to them. So you have that kind of program that that's, I believe, having traveled across the globe, that's what makes College Canyon really different from the majority for the rest of the colleges out there, especially among the community colleges. Thank you, Dr. Jed uh, and Tim. Uh, Tanish has modified the question now. Since he has got the answer for that game designer uh, qualifications, now he would like to know that is it better to do the game designing courses in India or is it better to go abroad for that? Oh, good question. You know, um, there's no right answer to that. What matters is that you are um, fully capable of supporting a company that is designing games. And if the pathway for that is through the bachelor's degree program in the United States, then take it. If the pathway is through a program in India, then take it. Always look at what is your ultimate goal. Is your ultimate goal to be a programmer for game design? Is your ultimate goal to run the game designing company? What do you really want? And choose your path based on that. If you want to run the game design company or start your own company, you come to the United States, you come to California. If you want to get a job doing work for somebody else who is running a successful game company and be part of supporting their mission, then it might be easier to do it just directly from India. So it depends on what your goal is. And I like what Mr. Robbins said. He said something that has been the core of how I guide myself for my whole life. And that's that you must become a lifelong learner. So my encouragement associated with becoming a lifelong learner is that you always remember that the skill sets that you develop through university are not just in game design. The skill sets that you develop in university are critical thinking, our ability to learn, 
ability to adapt to new technologies, ability to adapt well to new situations in life like this COVID-19. So the whole package is there. If you take a bachelor's degree in California, that's what your bachelor's degree creates for you, is that ability to be a lifelong learner. So going back to your actual question, is it better to stay in India or is it better to come to California? It depends on what you want. But if you want to be a lifelong learner and if you want to someday own your own company, you may want to consider a bachelor's degree in California where game design is very popular. If you are just anxious to get to work and you just want to be a coder and you just want it, which is nothing wrong. There's, we have so many coders out there. We have to have them. It's such an important part of game design. Then that's a pathway you can take directly from India. I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, I believe that uh, to the best of my knowledge, coding is something that for that you need passion and you have passion as well as you need to have a good IQ. So if you are having a combination of these two things, then you can become a very good programmer and you can do wonders in the uh, world of coding. So moving on to the next question from Jeffrey Ahmed. Uh, it's a very good question. Can we transfer to places like New York University easily from COC? I like that question. So the answer is yes. So from College of the Canyons, you can go anywhere. Now, I talk a lot about the schools in California because we have transfer agreements with them where it's easy transfer. But we transfer to New York. We transfer all the time to New York, lots of schools in New York. And in fact, a lot of students like to take their first two years in Southern California, and then they like to explore a different part of the United States, Chicago or New York. And they go there and go to school. Florida, like Ernesto, went to Florida. So there's a, the United States is a big country with a lot of variety. I encourage you to explore it. Thank you, Tim. And I believe we need such kind of students that have a destination university that uh, would be the best uh, suited or be best fitted student for COC. So as uh, we had a discussion with you previously also, uh, let me tell you all the students that when you are going uh, to a visa consulate for getting your visa done, F1 visa, so you should know which university you are planning to go eventually. If you have your goals clear, then you will not be facing a problem in getting your visa as well. So you have to be prepared like that. Uh, okay, coming to the next question again by Tanish Jaiswal. I want to become a law... Okay. Uh, He's uh, just writing that I want to become a lifelong learner and someday own a company. Wish you very good luck for that, Tanish. And I, I can, uh, you know, I can assure that if you have that much of uh, capabilities and that that much courage, then definitely we'll see you in future as a, a company owner. Wish you good luck. All right, Tanish. Perfect. Excellent. So. Um, I don't see any other question after this. So, and it was a great session, I would say. And uh, Tim, Dr. Jai has really spoken well about uh, College of Kenyans. And thank you so much, uh, Ernesto, for your time to being very much patient, you know, to be there for the whole session. And you shared a lot of experiences with all of us. And I would like to say thank you to all the students uh, who have been so patient uh, throughout the session and who have asked very good questions. Okay, we have another question. Uh, another question popped up from Jeffrey Emmert. Uh, so how will it be better to apply to COC and then transfer to New York University instead of just applying directly to NYU? Yeah, that's a good question. It depends. So one of the advantages of coming to College of the Canyons is it costs less money. Another advantage to coming to College of the Canyons is as a freshman and as a sophomore, you are living in a school environment, both the community at large and also the college itself. Now, if you apply to New York University and you get accepted to university and you can afford New York University, and if they have classes right now you can start taking, then I'll, I'll help you apply to New York University. That's fine. But if they don't have classes yet that you can take, or if you can't get in, or if you want to try to budget your money a little bit differently, 
then you can come through me. So is it better? It all depends. Um, it depends on you as a student. It depends on your capabilities as a student, depends on the level of support structure you need. And it also depends on your financial situation. Our system is designed because a master's degree is really what every student should get. So we have dropped the cost at the beginning to as little as possible to make it so you save your money for the master's degree. I know a lot of students are not thinking, oh, master's degree, that's too big. But by the time you're a senior, you're gonna start thinking about master's degree. And you're gonna be able to take the money you saved at College of the Canyons, and you're gonna be able to apply it to that master's degree. And the master's degree is almost free. I want everyone to get a master's degree. That's why coming to College of the Canyons is the best way to do it because of the money savings and the support structure for success. Now, if you go to New York University and if you struggle or you have problems, if it's not working out, I want you to always remember, you can come to me. We will fix it and we'll send you back or to wherever you wanna go. You always have a second chance with me. So either way you go, I'm there for you, either pathway. And I think that's a very good point. Some students, they, they want to go to big university at the beginning, which is great. If you get accepted, if your family can afford it, we will never tell them not to go because our goal is what is the best for you. But I have to tell you, we have actually received a decent amount of students who tried out UCLA, didn't do well, basically flunk out. Um, that UCLA would tell them go to College of Canyons um, to make up some of the credits and then come back to us. We had yeah. quite a few uh, returns, about 10%, I think, of our students have tried other universities, didn't work out, well, other college didn't work out. And then they just like go to College of Canyons. And then if you can pass College of Canyons, then you can transfer back. We call this reverse transfer. Some students did start with four years. They did great, wonderful, happy for them. It's your life. We want you to have a good life. But like what Tim said, if it didn't work out for some reason, or it's just really expensive, because the way how USC charge people, it's like what Tim says, it's semi-criminal. $70,000 a year just for tuition. $70,000. Ours is $10,000. So you kind of just think about it. And ultimately, you start with us two years, and then you go to USC, which many of our students do. Or my favorite students that are, uh, that um, and this is also no Lacey. Lacey started with us two years and went to U, um, uh, USC. But then she was able to continue with USC with a master's degree because the first two years that she did not have to spend so much tuition at USC. So whatever that's the best for you, and that's what the counselors are for. That's what people like Mr. Robbins, people like me, people like Amy. That's what we're here for. We want to talk to you to know what you really want. And then we will provide you different pathway. This is what I used to do. Day one, Ernest will tell you. Day one in the classroom, I run on a big whiteboard. Would, what do you want to be 10 years from now? Even as a freshman, you if you were taking my class, I would ask you, what do you want to what do you want to be 10 years from now? And this went backwards. If you're 18, what do you be what do you want to be? And where do you want to be when you're 28 and 30? And then we plan it backwards. So if we have an end goal in mind, if you know, great. If you don't, we will counsel you. So if you do, perfect. You want to get designer, great. They will work it through with you. And then you can design. We consultation with your teachers. We consultation with your parents. You can decide which is the better pathway for you. Not for us, for you. And I, I want to add a little something to that. Wait. When I was 18 and somebody asked me, where do you want to be in 10 years? I had absolutely no idea what the answer was. But it's not knowing the answer that matters. It's being willing to go through the process of exploring possible answers. Because you will always be asking, where do I want to be in 10 years? Where do I want to be in five years? Where am I now? You'll be asking that every year for the rest of your life. And so it's not knowing the answer. Dr. J didn't do that because she was charting a path for every student for where they were gonna be at age 28. She was doing that to open that critical thinking and that learning and that understanding that your real goal, your real answer to when I'm 28, where do I wanna be? It's I wanna be wherever I am and I, I wanna be a great lifelong learner. 
That's the answer. And so bachelor's degree program in California is gonna develop that for you. It's a good question. Thank you for adding that. Tanish has another uh, question. Another well. question, yeah. <laughs> Is it better to do freelancing for your experience in any career of, or something else? You know, I want to say that the freelancing is extremely valuable. However, I really believe that freelancing should stand on the stage of that bachelor's degree. I think that you get that bachelor's degree and that opens up doors because you've demonstrated capability and the freelancing stands on top of that so that's how i think it should work i know that you can start working in a lot of careers right out of high school and you don't need a college degree to get that job but how are you going to become a lifelong learner what are you going to do when the industry shifts underneath you and changes how adaptable are you going to be for whatever the world throws at you all of that comes through that bachelor's degree through that lifelong learning development so freelancing is good i think you need that foundation that stage of the bachelor's degree thank you tim so i think uh, time to conclude the session thank you so much uh, the team from College of Kenyans, uh, Ms. Tim Honedal, Dr. Jay uh, Cheng, and thank you, Ernesto, uh, for being here. And uh, thank you so much, Ms. Robin Shetri, and all the students from Tulas International School for uh, coming up for this session. And I am sure that you mu all must have uh, got to know a lot about uh, community college, and especially about College of Kenyans, that a very good pathway for the students who want to uh, go eventually to the uh, highly ranked universities and definitely you can save on your money for two years your tuition fee for two years and then definitely you can use that for your masters so thank you so much good night everyone and good day to uh, the team you. from college of kenyans take care thank Bye -bye. you everyone just one more thing before we go off uh, sorry to cut you in between now all the students of Tulas International School, uh, please understand uh, there is a great opportunity to go ahead and understand, first of all, what you guys want to do with your career. There are a lot of career options available. If you want to become a game designer, you can do an engineering in software. You can do game designing, a master's degree. So you have to understand which all things is going to hit the right point. So you have my email address, robin.chetri at the rate in. You have any questions that you need to ask to Tim or to Dr. Chang, you can always email me. I will go ahead and forward those questions to them and make sure that you get all the answers that you require. Uh, success uh, does not come until unless you pull up success for achievement. So achievement has to go up and up day by day. So this is the time. Try to understand. Go through the internet. You guys are good with internet. Do all the research. Come up with doubts. Get in touch with me. The and so is the uh, you know the college uh, the college of canyons so feel free to stay with us all the time all right so ask questions right. thank you mr robin thank you thank you all right so it's, uh, it's a wrap for today's session Have a good day. Yeah, please have a good day. Celebrate your Independence Day. Thank you. Happy, happy Independence Day. But stay good at home and stay safe. Yeah. <laughs> have a good night, Namaste. Mr. Robin. Namaste. Namaste. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you. So I am going to, let me see. Now I, I know how to.